Cheryl Badwe here with Horse Racing Nation, pleased to be joined by track announcer for Parks Racing, Chris Griffin, and soon to be more of a permanent role at some of the New York tracks as well. Congratulations. Appreciate it, Sarah. Good to be on with you. I've seen you on social media. It seems like uh, it's one of those things, right? Like in horse racing where everybody, we communicate on social and we know who the people are, but we never like, ever interact face to face. So it's nice to have this opportunity. I appreciate you having me on. And yeah, it's a big weekend. Thank you so much for the well wishes. And uh, we'll get there. Looking forward to that in the wintertime. But big day of racing on Saturday. Really looking forward to it. Obviously, the biggest day of racing in Pennsylvania, as you pointed out, uh, 13 races, 10 of them going to be stakes races, five greatest stakes races big full fields a lot of uh, wagering opportunities some favorites in the card so you know that'll be kind of interesting to see how the card plays out i know you've got your handicapping hat on and uh, i might just follow your picks on that day because i actually get very lucky <laughs> i don't have to make selections on on a big day like this on saturday because there's so many other things going on but looking forward to it happy to be on and uh hopefully all the folks out there get involved in the wagering action on saturday and normally you would look at a 13 race card and be like 13 races, like, oh my, like some of these are really just filler. I don't feel that way about this card. There's a lot of really competitive fields, full fields, really good stakes matchups. I know that there's some favorites that look very reliable, sort of in the middle of the race day, but the actual mm -hmm. Pennsylvania Derby itself, this came up as a very tough field, 11 horses. I feel like the three-year-old male championship division is still a little up for the taking, depending on what happens here and what happens with some of those Breeders' Cup races coming up. How do you see the three-year-old division overall, and do you think anything is sort of uh, cleared up with this race? Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good question because I think that, you know, I've been asked that by a couple of people that are taking a look at the three-year-old race as we talk about the Bet Parks Pennsylvania Derby. Uh, Epicenter seems like he continues to assert himself as he is the the, the one to knock down as far as the three-year-olds are concerned. You know, maybe when you take a look at him as being the top of the division, however you feel about him being, you know, the top name that you do bring up, who knows? Um, when you see 11 horses in here with an opportunity to a million dollars for grade one winners in the field, I do think that it is an open division. I mean, this is still a three-year-old division where you could see some of these three-year-olds continue. A horse like Cyberknife, you know, Cyberknife could put a third grade one win on the card, you know, just on his resume, I should say. Uh, Tava's got an opportunity to continue to improve. You've got four grade one winners, as I pointed out. So when you get these horses that also could be looking to the Breeders' Cup, right? I mean, we're taking like a look at the Breeders' Cup races. And uh, I know a lot of people are talking about flight line and some of the big performances that'll be happening that day. But, you know, these are nice setups from a calendar standpoint standpoint too as far as where they're situated for these three-year-olds to see where they're at the connections can say let's go for a million dollars we're not going to see epicenter i think cyberknife and taba they kind of say hey we're going to see each other once again we just saw them in the haskell we'll see what happens there um, it's a really nice race it's at a mile and nath and uh, those that watch parks and watches pretty consistently plenty of run up you know i've talked about this as far as uh, or I should say the run to, not run up, but the run to the first turn when they break out of the gate. So you'll have time to find good position. And I think you'll need it because we, the people does look like, I don't want to say lone speed, but man, you know, on a fast main track, he's going to go to the front. He's breaking in between most of what many people would think are the top wagering choices in the race. So uh, it's an exciting race. It's an exciting race to handicap. Look at some of the different scenarios that could play out. There's really not a ton of speed, though. I, I don't know where people fall, and I don't know where you fall, kind of, as far as the Bet Parks Pennsylvania Derby, but I look at it, and and We the People looks like he's the clear horse that's going to be on the lead, and then we'll just see where everybody situates. Taba does seem to get the best trip from a handicapping standpoint. I think he's going to be able to stock. Tawny Port might go a little bit early. Um but we'll see how it shakes out. They, they all, they also have to break out of the gate and get that position and they got to make all those decisions in a split second. So it's a nice race and a nice card. And yeah, you talk about some of the races on the undercard as well. No races under a hundred thousand uh, dollars made in special weights to start the day. It's always nice to see these competitive two-year-olds first time starters. So there's plenty of value. There's going to be plenty of pick four options. Uh, and then the Philly big five, it's going to be a mandatory payout. So we got the mandatory distribution in the big five, the Philly big five, as we call it uh, on the last five races of the day, races nine through 13. So it's a, it's a wonderful card and the racing office did their job and, and put this card together. And uh, with the help of Great folks, just like you, Sarah, getting involved in the wagering on Saturday and, and helping those people on social media follow along, because I'll be honest, I'm probably going to put my phone away for most of the part of the day. That's one of those, <laughs> it's one of those days where 
and many track announcers that are out there in the country. I know many of them. Uh, we do kind of this. We just go, all right, it's, it's time to put that away. <laughs> it's just too much. Take a look. Let's not take a look at it. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Jessica Pacquiao going to be here, added to our team. And we've got a lot of people track side. So it's going to be a great day. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, I There's just way too much going on, right? As far as the, you know, interacting with people <laughs> on social, your own personal sure. wagering, making sure, sure that all your ducks are in a row for the finally big day to be able to call all those races. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you wear many hats over at Parks, so you'll be able to handle sure. it with the utmost ease and professionalism, um, even if it might it. not feel that way in your brain at times. Um, but I'm sure it looks that way to many of the rest of us. Um, as a fan before uh, handicapping the race, is there any horse that you're just really excited to see them in the flesh that you've kind of been following all year? Is there any horse that you're a really big fan of in this race? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I would have to say Secret Oath. I mean, she jumps off the page, right? When you talk about the cotillion and I think the excitement, it's D. Wayne Lucas. And, and, and growing up, I'm, I'm not too, too old yet. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> early 40s. Um, but, you know, D. Wayne Lucas is a name that we grew, I grew up with. I mean, this is somebody that I, I sat and watched many races with my dad and watching, uh, you know, the great cults that he had and winning Kentucky Derbies and the great Phillies that he's had over the many years. It's a legendary career. And the fact that he'll be here at Parks, that he's willing to spend time with us, and uh, he's going to be joining us at a press conference in the morning tomorrow. So he's just, he's very willing to continue to uh, share his story and share his experience and, and be a big part of the sport, which he's been for many decades now. So uh, you take a look at, at, at his, his program and the way that he's just his training tree as well. The many trainers that have worked for him with him uh, that's the person. But then we talk about the Philly secret oath. I saw her this morning and yeah, you just get caught up in it. I went there back. I went back there with my, uh, with our TV crew actually to just shoot some footage and you can even see with them, like it's just a different, feel you know it's a different feel when these grade one horses do arrive and she's been a horse that we followed since her two-year-old campaign because she should she hasn't shied away from races she's definitely uh showed up she's run against the boys i mean you know running at oakland park uh winning the kentucky oaks two good races behind nest at saratoga so they've come here to win they said that they were targeting this race for some time so that's nice to hear as well and we'll, we'll see if it does uh come out that way we'll see if it, it it does play out on paper that she gets the right trip another race where yeah she's going to need to get a little bit of a setup right we'll see how close she is but on paper she does seem like the the horse to beat so she's a deserving morning light favorite in there but she would probably be the one that uh, i'm really looking forward to to seeing and i and i saw her in person i got a chance to hang out with cyber knife and i i've told this this isn't really that interesting of a story but cyber knife his great his grade one victories i have actually seen them both i actually went to arkansas that weekend for the arkansas derby just on a whim i a, a friend of mine said come on down to arkansas and i went down there and Cyberknife won the Arkansas Derby. And then the Haskell, of course, you know, New Jersey, Monmouth Park, not that far away. So I drove over there and, and watched the race too. So now who knows? I mean, maybe in the booth for a grade one win. How about that? Wouldn't that be something? But again, I told you it's not that interesting. It was probably more interesting to me than anything. <laughs> I appreciate you laughing along with me on that one, Sarah. But uh, yeah, it's 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 nice. It's We got the two-year-old races and everybody likes to see these possibly emerging stars as well in the undercard. And uh, it's a jam-packed card. The, and the Gallup Bob, not to talk about too much of, a, of too many of the races on the card, but the sprint race in there last year, remember Jackie's warrior was one to five, you know, Jackie's warrior came in and, and it was, it was a smaller field and you knew, look, Jackie's warrior has, is clearly one of the top horses we've seen in the last, you know, sprinting wise or, or whatnot in the last five, five years, you know, 10 years, who knows where you rank him, but uh, he was fast. He came here. He was in a canter. He wanted geared down. He wanted easily. Uh, but this year, you're, I don't think you're going to see that type of performance. At least I don't think you do, because what have we got? 14, 15 horses entered in the Gallon Bob. So uh, that field has gotten significantly bigger. The sprint division is a bit more wide open. So, yeah, you point out the favorites. There's some favorites in the middle sections of the card, but they are favorites that I do think. I think there's some question marks, right? I don't, I don't think there's as many slam dunk favorites as you say man, I'm just going to, this horse, I just, I don't, I don't see, I just talked about the gallon ball running son of a gun, probably, you know, one of the favorites in there. Uh, how do you get around a horse like that? That's been running against some very, very good sprinters. So uh, it's a nice card. It's a great handicapping card. It's, it's, it's an opportunity for people to make some money, hopefully that day. And, and I've always felt on big days, Sorry, I'm talking so much. Uh, when you get announcers <laughs> on Sarah, we just can't stop talking. It's your job. Uh, I guess, right? <laughs> 
uh, some people would would rather I uh, I zip it sometimes. But you know, early on <laughs> the card, I think on big days especially, I think when you if you see some long shots, you see some of the prices. I just think that that gets the energy level going too. You know what I mean? If you get these short price horses early on the sequence, which can happen, uh, you know, then then you start. Yeah, that's why you put your phone away because then it's like, oh, it's going to be <laughs> chalky and it's going to be this, it's going to be that. So we'll see how it plays out. The horses will perform on the track. It's big, full fields. And hopefully, like I said, people get involved. And they definitely will. I mean, I think the, there's a lot of buzz about this card and people are certainly looking forward to it. At least that's definitely the vibe on social media. Um, is Secret Oath going to be your pick for the cotillion? I have to ask since you brought her you know, up. I, you know, I really don't get too much into selections on days like this, Sarah. So I'm going to be one of those guys. It's okay. kind of like, well, maybe him. How I will say this. There's three horses down to the inside that I think a lot of people are going to take a look at, right? Green up won the prep here. She won the local prep at the Captain Sophia. Visually, she was as impressive as I think you can be. If you go back and watch the race, and she ran by a, a, a very nice filly in Interstate Daydream, who's not going to return here in the cotillion. Uh, but that was a, a big number. She hasn't lost since she's been with trainer Todd Fletcher. Arad Ortiz Jr. got to know her last time out. They went at the mile and 70 yards, uh, you know, in a pretty strong time. And she looked like a filly that had more left to do. I think she's going to get the jump on Secret Oath. As I said, and I will continue to say, there's no gray area right now with Secret Oath. People are all in or they are they are they're against. They're just not mm -hmm. it is I haven't seen somebody say, well, maybe we put her in exotics and we do this, that, and the other. They may very well do that, but I just haven't seen that. You know, there's just those horses sometimes people say, Well, yeah, I think this is a horse that can that can run and I think she'll run her race, but is it gonna be good enough? This, that, or the other. Um Adair Manor, you know, Bob Baffert, he knows how to win big races, bottom line. So, you know, he's going to be sending out uh, Taba, of course, in, in, in the boys' race. But Adair Manor, she's visually uh, uh, just a, an amazing horse to take a look at. When you see her on the track, three-year-old filly by Uncle Mo, she looks great. Uh, she ran second last time behind Interstate Daydream in the Black Eyed Susan. There's been some time off, obviously, a layoff. But the fact that the connections say off of that layoff, we're going to come back in a grade one, one million dollar race. That speaks volumes. And, and the betters and the warning line agrees with it because she's seven to two. Goddess of Fire has only won once in her career. It seems like she's been another one that's been a lot of people's pick. Uh, you get John Velasquez, you get Todd Pletcher connections that know what to do in grade one races. She finished third behind Secret Oath. She's only two lengths off of her. So if, you, if you're against Secret Oath, maybe you say Goddess of Fire is your pick, you're definitely going to get a higher price on Goddess of Fire uh, on Saturday afternoon. Again, I think the only thing I was just wondering, she's only won once in a career. And so I wasn't really quite sure what to take from that. The four seconds, the two thirds, she's running against some, some really good fields. She's been in grade one. She's been in grade twos behind some nice horses. But is she taking that next step? You know, um, Red Oak Stable could have a big afternoon. They've got mind control in the Park Stirk Mile earlier on. Uh, so, you know, that could be a big day for Red Oak Stable and Todd Pletcher and those connections. But if I was going to talk about a horse that I think that can really give Secret Oath her run, uh, I think it's green up. I think if she gets the right trip down to the inside, I think she's got a tactical advantage. And just the way that she finished, the way that she finished was really impressive. Uh, and this will be her third start off of a layoff. This is a big step up. She's running two stakes races where, uh, you know, black type stakes races when you're talking about the Buenos Springs and the Catherine Sophia, but to step up in a grade one, the cotillion, we'll find out. And that's why they run the races, right? I and mean, that's why they do it. So we'll, we'll see how it does shake out. But I think the fans will be on board secret oath and we'll see if she goes off favorite and how, how heavy of a favorite that'll be. Yeah, I think certainly the name recognition and the Kentucky Oaks winner, she's going to take a ton of money at the window. Very deserving favorite. And, you know, she has like that that eye-catching closing kick from the outside that she makes that move. And it's it's very exciting to see her start to, you know, get motoring along. Um, I have the same concerns as you do as far as Goddess of Fire goes. I mean, only having the one win to her credit and that being that maiden race, of course. And then, you know, competing against extremely tough company. But also at the same time, you want to see them win a little bit more. Um, I'm I'm very interested in green up. This is a horse that I've talked about a little bit with uh, some other people when discussing the races that are going to be on Saturday. I think that this is just a horse that is improving at the right time, as you said, really kind of showing that she's ready to take that step forward against tougher competition. And I think that you will get a fair enough price to see what she can do against fillies of this caliber. Um, speaking of horses that I have some concerns with that just don't really win. In the Pennsylvania Derby, I've been a huge Zandon fan for a very long time. 
he doesn't win. Uh, he's won two times in his career. Again, facing the toughest of company, dancing all the dances, being right there with horses like Epicenter that you could argue are currently leading the three-year-old division. But a five to one on a, as the third choice as a horse that's only won twice. And he's always right there. But I wonder if he either has just been facing tougher, or maybe he has a little bit of hang in him. Um, I ended up going with Cyberknife as my top pick, a horse that you already mentioned is getting to see for those great one wins. Maybe you're a little bit of a lucky charm of sorts. This is going to be the time <laughs> where you get to call some of those wins. No pressure. We'll no pressure. Yeah, nope. No big deal. I just have, we'll have money on this horse. It's all up to you, Chris. It's no big deal. Um, did you see any sort of price horse in the field that you really think is going to be able to round out those exotics for a little bit more value in the race? Are you a little sure. chalkier? Where are you going in here? Sure. Yeah. They call me chalk Griffin sometimes around here. But, you know, <laughs> Zandon, Zandon with the type of trip at a mile and an eighth, this is his game. I mean, he's been this distance four times, one win, two seconds and a third, right? So he's never been out of the trifecta in those three starts. Joel Rosario is going to ride him now. He wrote him on the debut for the victory. So he knows the horse from back in October as a two-year-old, but now as a three-year-old, what kind of trip does he get? We talked about the speed scenario a little bit. I, you know, is he a little pace compromised? We'll find out. He's got that inside draw. As far as his wins, you know, winning those those big races, he's he's still earned over $1.2 million. So the connections will definitely take it. As far as, you know, is he going to take that next step forward? He's only a length and a half behind Epicenter. So I think this also comes down to how big of an Epicenter fan you are. If you're a big Epicenter <laughs> fan, then I think that you're going to be a Zandit fan, right? Because how can you shy away from a horse that's not that far off of him if you feel like he's the top horse in the division? Skippy Longstocking and White Abario. White Abario gets a tough trip. I've seen a lot of people kind of pointing out that he's going to get a tough trip from the outside draw. Luis Saez, he'll know what to do from the brink. And as I said, you do have some time to make that decision. I mean, it's, it's a mile and eighth, but you, you're going to come down that stretch and you're going to have a little bit of time to negotiate where you need to be as far as in the race. Like I said, Taba, I think it's the right trip. I think the favorites probably hold the key. Simplification got here basically two weeks early. Uh, Antonio Sano wanted to be here and let him get a feel for the track. He worked over the racetrack too. Uh, so people like to pay attention to those things as far as arriving here, getting settled in, making sure they have an opportunity to get that work. Paco Lopez, at 10 to one, Skippy Longstocking also sitting at 10 to one. I guess those are probably the two horses that I would say you could look at from a price standpoint. There's some big, big long shots, some of the local horses that that, that, that you say, yeah. you know, can they, can they find their way into the trifecta somehow? It looks like the main contenders are to the inside or, or to the middle of the field. Uh, when Cyberknife, We the People, Tawny Port and Taba are right next to each other, it, it just lends to a scenario where it seems like Maybe one of the winners comes from one of those post positions. If we're talking about a price play and, and one to stick around, it is we the people, though, because we've been talking about the pace scenario. I think he's going to become one of those horses that people start to really take a second glance at. His 10 leg victory came in a mile and eights. I know it was in the Peter Pan. It was at Belmont. So different type of uh, um, configuration as far as the track is concerned. Uh, the race at Mountaineer, he ran second to Skippy Longstocking as a beaten favorite. So you're going to get a beaten favorite in a grade three that many people were also taking a look at in the Belmont. Remember, this horse was just under, what, four to one in the Belmont? Four line favorite. I mean, I mean, he was right there. And now all of a sudden we're going to jump off board off of a second place finish over a sloppy main track at Mountaineer at 12 to one in the morning line with Flavian Pratt when, when there isn't a ton of speed. You know, I, I, whether he can stick around. Whether somebody's going to push him and say, "All right, we're going to we're going to take it right to we the people," and there's not there's no way he's going to be alone on the lead. He's going to be able to run around there and get a 47, something, something like that type half mile. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be a little bit cooler on, on Saturday as far as the weather projections. It's actually rained a little bit today. Uh, the storm. This it's not a storm. It's like a passing shower kind of came through here probably an hour ago. Um, that may affect the turf a, a little bit as far as we had a good turf course on Wednesday. The turf rail is going to come down, so the turf rail is going to be at zero feet on Saturday. I saw them taking it down this morning. Um, so a little bit more give as far as the turf is concerned when you take a look at that handicapping. This track dries out very well. Uh, it's going to be cooler temperatures, so we'll see how the track does dry out going into Saturday. 
I think we'll have a warmer day tomorrow. Should be a fast main track, but I could see with the cooler temperatures, some of the horses from a little bit off the pace having an opportunity to really get into it. So uh, I don't play the the B word game as far as the the bias. You know, we, I, I know it happens sometimes. It does happen sometimes, and, and, and you say, man, that the, the rail has been good, or or the the track is really tight and fast, and, and that's how it's playing. You have 13 races to figure that out. We'll see early on in the car how it does play out. Um, but for the most part, Parks plays pretty balanced as far as horses being able to win on the front end and come from stock or come from way out of it. So, you know, I don't see that that really coming into play on Saturday, but that's for the betters and for social media to decide, I think, on that day, <laughs> Sarah, right? And, and again, another reason why I probably turned my phone face down. I was my just going to say, you'll up. never know. <laughs> my sister is coming that day, though, and I've never I've never had Ooh. really family on site to come join me. So that's actually going to be cool. So I will have to look at my phone to make sure my sister gets to come hang out with me for uh, maybe a race <laughs> and maybe get to watch in the booth. But uh, other than that, probably not going to pay attention to my phone. I don't know. Who knows? I'll probably like something. <laughs> maybe I'll like one of your tweets or something. I was going to say, you have to at that. least tell people to watch this video. Um, and also, well, of course. But the, <laughs> yeah, of course, we'll do that. But, you know, you pick a but winner or that. something like that. Give me a give me a 10, 15 to one shot. We'll hit that like button. Make sure we get all right. the, uh, all the love. <laughs> all right. Well, that sounds great. Excited to hear you on the mic for the entire 13 race card and uh, get a feel for how these races are all going to play out on Saturday. Awesome card of racing, really full field, competitive uh, for the betters. It's just going to be a really cool way to uh, spend the day. I'm going to be at a wedding. The phone might be on the video of Parks under the table. Who knows? Um, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> no, it might it might be on um, while I'm you know hanging out and partying with a couple of my friends. Might just have to go. tune in. But um, wanted to say thank you so much again for taking the time to chat. Lots of insight about the track and knowing that the rails are going to be down on the turf. That's a great piece of information yeah, sure. as well. Sure. Um, so thank you for chatting with me about the full card for Pennsylvania Derby Day. No, Sarah, we appreciate the added coverage. I think you do a fantastic job as well. I know you'll be at a oh, wedding and you. hanging out with your friends, but, uh, you know, we talk about social media and following along. And I think it's important to have the, the younger voices get involved in handicap and really uh, bring 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 horse racing to, to more and more people. So you're doing a fantastic job as well. So I want to give you a shout. Thank you again from uh, the team here at Parks for, for having me on and uh, let me uh, spend some time with you and uh, have fun at the wedding. Don't have too much fun. <laughs> have, have, have some fun. All right. Well, thank you so much. That means quite a lot coming from you and good luck to everyone on Saturday. Good luck, guys. Thank you.